And I'll call the member for Lindsay. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. As one of the only seats in Western Sydney to vote yes, I want to place on my record today the pride I have for my community who did so. I am proud that every day I come in here and I speak of having the best people who roll up their sleeves and work hard to get stuff done. This was an exceptional result for our community. I know that many people are unaffected personally by the discrimination which has prevented people in the LGBTI community from being married. It didn't affect everyone, but we had a large voter turnout. So to the people who weren't affected but participated and supported the rights of everyone in our community, I want to say thank you. Although I will always argue that discrimination affects us all, Deputy Speaker, and all should be involved, particularly and honourably participating and counting when it comes to ending discrimination. I am also the first member to hold the marginal seat of Lindsay and declare my support publicly for marriage equality. I note the former member, now out of office, has a very big opinion that she holds no power or weight. It's such a shame that she didn't provide any leadership on the issue when it counted or when it could have made a difference. Leadership is critical in this discussion. I didn't seek election to sit on the fence or sway in the breeze or be swept up in popular decision-making. Sometimes hard and difficult decisions need to be made. Not every decision will please everyone all of the time, but we must always do the least harm when making decisions. And as a marginal seat holder, it would have been much easier for me, Deputy Speaker, to say nothing, to do nothing, but that amounts to me being nothing, a zero contributor in this debate. And I didn't seek election in a hard-fought battle to do that. I want things to change. I want to be the best country with the most generous hearts and open minds, not afraid to make change based only out of fear. I do accept, though, that changing stuff, remodelling the status quo, is scary for some people, but should never ever, and that we should never make a decision based on fear, division or scaremongering or the spreading of mistruths which is why leadership in this is important. This wasn't an easy process, and many difficult conversations were had with people who wanted to talk about everything other than marriage equality. Children of LGBTIQ Australians, their family structure, what's taught in schools, unicorns, although I never disagree with talking about unicorns, but marrying bridges was how ludicrous this public discourse actually became. To those people who did in, uh, involve themselves and engage respectfully, I say thank you. After those spending most of my life um, advocating for and standing up for people, fighting for our community, I saw this debate as no different for the other things that I have done. Fighting to end inadequate disability services and make sure that public places didn't discriminate against people with access issues. Standing up for and giving a voice to people that are homeless in our community, ensuring their needs are met. So when it came to ending discrimination for so many people in Australia who needed it, there was no difficult decision to make. I'm a Catholic, my children are also baptised, and I grew up respecting the Bible. And what I learnt was to treat people with respect and with dignity and with inherent worth, no matter who they were. I accept that not everyone voted yes. That was their right to do so. Religious freedoms are protected adequately by this bill. So to all the Pope people who voted no, I offer this. Recently, when we held Lindsay's 10th Welcoming the Babies event, over 80 families came. This was during the thick of the marriage equality survey. A few days before that, my office received one of the saddest phone calls. It was a mum, one of the two mums of a baby in our area who was registered to attend. Attend an event in a public place at the local Westfield, in fact. She called to say they wouldn't be coming. They were not comfortable coming along because of the debate that was currently underway and the scrutiny placed on their family, their lives and their love for each other. To quote, we don't feel safe, we're feeling a little bit vulnerable in our community right now. This made me incredibly angry, Deputy Speaker, but it also made me overwhelmingly sad that in 2017, two adult women in our own community felt the pain and rejection, persecution and judgment so badly they excluded themselves from a community event. Nothing in the Bible or my religious teaching ever said that this was okay, no matter who you happened to be. To those mums, I want to say this. When we pass this bill, I hope you feel safe, more accepted and part of our community once and for all finally ending all the forms of discrimination that you have endured. To my friend and my basketball teammate—I never miss an opportunity to say basketball in here either—to Sam and her partner Kirsty, never have I felt more ashamed as a person than when I stood next to you and your boys 
under the big no message painted in the sky at our children's basketball presentation. This was a hateful reflection of discrimination that at a community event that your love and your family could be so demeaned and on such public display. That moment will stay with me forever, Deputy Speaker. Worse than that were the judgmental conversations that we overheard, the judgment that spiked and how you must have felt would have been incredibly difficult. As always, though, you handled it with grace and with dignity. To your boys who had to endure that among their peers, I am so sorry. I am sorry that the attention and the value of your mum's love for each other is so hard for other people to accept. I also want to offer this, Deputy Speaker, for those people who think their freedoms are being trashed by creating a more equal society. To the families of those people who didn't make it to see the last form of discrimination levelled at our LGBTIQ community end because their loved one could no longer withstand the hurt, the hate and the harassment. I can only imagine that this victory is bittersweet. Forced for years to watch their loved ones accept the hate and the bullying LGBT people have, ha have had to endure. They have been five times more likely to buy, die by suicide than those who are not in the LGBTIQ community. Those shoulders who carried the weight and suffered as a result of discrimination, those who never lived to see the day where their love was finally accepted and recognised. I want us all to remember those people and their grieving families, Deputy Speaker, and never forget the battle it has been to get here and those who paid the ultimate price for simply being who they are. And not just for this, but for every single other piece of discriminatory practice we still involve ourselves in, most notably those are that of our First Nations people. Let's remember this debate about how it feels to end discrimination finally and move forward as a community, where we end it now rather than later. There is so much more power and inclusion and acceptance and diversity than there is not. To my gay friends in committed relationships, Dan and Chris, to the men we met at dinner, de Villiers and Craig, and my comrades, Steve and Hayden, whose love has been solid for years, congratulations to you for withstanding hate for so long, but also finding someone to love. Thank you for standing up for those people younger than you, less experienced and still questioning their sexuality for whom this debate has been tough. Since the announcement of this survey, I have been concerned for the welfare of all of the young people who aren't yet old enough to have been in long-term relationships. The spike in mental health referrals has grown by about 40 per cent since the announcement of the survey, and for this reason alone, I never supported the use of $122 million of taxpayer funds to conduct an opinion poll on other people's love, care and respect for one another. And I will always, always resent that it was done. I cannot understand why other people feel that it is their right to pass judgment over the relationships of other people. I do, however, take heart that the overall sentiment of Australians is positive and that our country is in front of the parliament and government, that this government is behind and it's those in here playing catch-up to what our communities actually want. So for the young people in my community and right around Australia who have been struggling to figure out their own sexuality, to understand why the storybook tales of living happily ever after of someone of the opposite sex didn't make sense to you, please take heart that they have had their say. They voted overwhelmingly to accept your love, your diversity and your sexuality. To the young people that I have the pleasure of knowing, Mitch, Matt, his partner Matt, not even confusing at all, Elisa, Kate, Vanessa and Chantel, I look forward to watching your relationships and your love blossom as this country finally matures. To my colleagues who led the way long before I got here, thank you for being honourable and progressive, in particular to Penny Wong, Louise Pratt and Julian Hill and those opposite for whom this debate is personal. Sometimes, as much as we try, politics is personal. I know something of that and the toll that it takes. Thank you for your courage to be yourself and share your talent and your skills with us. And lastly, to Nita Green and Sally Rugg, two of the unsung heroes of this campaign, for whom this survey was deeply pers personal and also confronting at times. Thank you for your tireless work for those in the LGBTI community to make them feel accepted, for teaching those who don't accept and respect other people's love 
for how it's done. I'm incredibly proud to know you both. And as I always say, no freedom till we're equal. Damn right I support it. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for Lindsay. The question is that the amendments be agreed to, and I call the minister.